Hello, everyone. Welcome to Navigate STL Schools, a podcast. My name is Anastasia Allen. I am here with Carlene Ada with STL Lift of Love the Lou, and we are so excited to have you here today. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. I'm super excited to be here. Thank you for uh, thank you for this invitation. <laughs> no problem. Okay, so we like to start off asking everybody. Tell us about your K twelve educational experience. My K through 12 educational experience. So I was born and raised in St. Charles, Missouri, about 30 minutes from here. And I, to my knowledge, had a really good education K through 12. I had some great teachers. They were very inspiring. They encouraged me to go above and beyond. Um, It was cool to be smart at my school. So you didn't get made fun of for the most part. So I would say it was altogether a really great experience and it prepared me very well, especially my high school years. It prepared me very well for college. Awesome. Um, So tell us about the work that you do in North St. Louis um, and what STL Lift is doing. Sure. So I am the program director for STL Lift, and our mission is to uplift and empower inner city youth to reach their fullest potential. And we do this through education, empowering experiences, and mentorship. So we basically walk alongside inner city youth and help them to reach their fullest potential, help them to reach their goals. And that can be everything from teaching them life skills, um, helping them to get their driver's permit, their driver's license, um, teaching them how to conduct uh, effective interviews, resume building. Uh, We have programs where they learn woodworking skills, small engine skills, entrepreneurship skills. It's a very holistic approach in how we're mentoring them. And um, I mean, I could sometimes I take students driving practice. Sometimes I take them to an eye doctor appointment. Sometimes I'm talking to them about toxic relationships. It's just a very holistic in our approach. Awesome. And you guys primarily function in North City, right? Yes. So we have a few students who used to live in North City and then moved to North County or something like that. So I wouldn't say 100 percent of our um, the our students live in the inner city, but the majority do. So why did you why do you guys operate out in North City? So Love the Lou actually was started on Enright Avenue, not too far from here, which is, you know, in the heart of North City. And so when Love the Lou was started, and my boss, Lucas Rugley, um, started the organization 10 years ago, he wanted to focus on North City um, specifically. That, that is where he felt God was calling him to um, start the, the organization, and that's kind of how we've operated ever since. So we know that North City isn't the only part of Missouri that has problems. I'm sure, you know, there's problems all over South County, North County, but for our organization and our niche is North City. Awesome. Uh, So what inspires you to do this work? What inspires me is that when I, and I always tell my students this, when I was their age, you know, 13 through 18, I didn't really have a mentor. Um, I was out making some not so smart decisions. Um, I got into all kinds of things. By the grace of God, I made it out and I'm, um, I'm happy for those experiences to a degree, but I wish I would have had a mentor sitting there telling me right from wrong, giving me advice, that kind of thing. And so I wanna be for my students what I didn't have. And um, really what inspires me is just seeing them succeed. When I see them get into colleges, one of my students just got into um, a, a university in Ohio. When I see them walk across the stage, I got to see like six of my students graduate a couple weeks ago. When I see them get into that university, walk across the stage, get that job, land that position, um, it's just my heart is just full of joy that I, that I was able to be a part of that journey and help them get there. Awesome. So what is something that is like unexpected that you've encountered in this work? Something unexpected that I've encountered. Hmm. Ooh, that's a hard one. I guess I wasn't expecting when I first started. First of all, I started off as a volunteer. Mm-hmm. And back in 2015, I never expected that I would come on as a full time staff a year later. And I definitely never expected that I would grow in my relationships with the students to the degree that I am. So like there'll be some times that I'll actually be out, they'll, they'll like spend the weekend at my house or we'll, we'll go to a retreat for a week or something and I'll come back and be like, that was really fun, I miss them. I miss hanging out with them. 
you know? And so you build these relationships and these bonds with these teenagers. They almost become like your little brother or your little sister, someone you, you know, you care about. And so it's not like working at Starbucks or something where your customers, you have no attachment to them. Mm -hmm. You just see them for five minutes and you either never see them again or you see them again in a week, but there's no like relationship there. And my organization, we're very heavy, heavy on building relationships because how is a teenager supposed to confide in you about her boyfriend beating her if there's no trust, if there's no relationship, right? And so we're really big on building relationships. And so I grow close to these students. And so um, I, I just didn't expect that at first. You've talked a lot about the students. Can you tell us how your organization is helping them with their educational challenges? You talked a lot and I know we always talk about this education adjacent spaces and where people need help to be able to get through it how do you feel like STO Lift is supporting the kids through that sure so it's in our mission statement that we uh that education is important that we uh we mentor them through um stressing the importance of education so we as part of our as part of our program and we actually go into the schools so we mm -hmm. will go into our we represent probably over 10 schools within the students that are in our program. We've got students at Gateway, um, Hazelwood, uh, Sumner. I mean, we've got students all over St. Louis schools and we'll actually go into the schools and have lunch with them, talk to their counselors, talk to their social workers, talk to their teachers, see how they're doing on their tests, see how we can step in and help. And so we have an after school tutoring program where we're helping them with their homework and if they don't have homework, we're helping them with their writing skills, with their multiplication skills, um, helping them with their reading skills. So we are very, it's no secret when they get into the program and e even as we're working with them that we value education. And we understand that not every student in our program is going to go to a four-year university. So, but we lay out the options that are out there. You can go to a community college, you can go to a university, you can go to a trade school, you can go to the military and get the education through them. Um, so we lay out the avenues that they can take, but all the while that we're raising them up from the time they get into our program, which is usually seventh grade, we are constantly stressing the importance of education and how that is a game changer. It really is. Get, knowledge is power and education is the game changer. You are absolutely right. But for some reason, this narrative keeps being perpetuated in society that teenagers, particularly low income teenagers or black and brown teenagers are not invested in their education. And we know that that's not the truth. We know that there are so many systemic barriers that are at sometimes present, preventing teens from reaching their full potential, especially when you start talking about the North St. Louis area, the lack of resources, the fact that there are only three high schools in St. Louis, Missouri that offer advanced courses full time uh, in math and science. And I'm just wondering, like, how does your organization um, kind of help students realize their full potential and what are some of these challenges that kids are bumping their heads up against in the educational system that are making people think that these stereotypes are actually true when they are not indicative of the potential of the youth in St. Louis? Okay, that was kind of a loaded question, so I'm gonna try to track back. <laughs> Basically, we it, it comes down to awareness. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna get this wrong, but I think it was in the 60s or 70s, maybe before, there used to be commercials on TV of doctors smoking cigarettes and saying, I prefer Newports or mm -hmm. I prefer Stags or whatever, right? Because the world was not aware that cigarettes are actually very bad. So much to the point that you've got doctors on TV saying, this is what I smoke, right? No one knew. It wasn't until years or decades later that everyone found out that cancer kills, I'm sorry, that smoking kills and it causes cancer. So just in the same way, a lot of these students are not aware that they're getting a crappy education. Some of them know, and they don't have a choice, unfortunately. But some, a lot of them, and a lot of the parents too, just are not aware that your kid is getting a subpar education. And so organizations like Navigate STL, which is why, one of the reasons why I respect and appreciate what you guys are doing, are making students and parents aware. Um, and so, I, I agree with you. I don't think that it's that the students are not invested in their education. I think that they're invested, but they just don't know how to advocate for better. They don't mm -hmm. know how to go to their teachers and say, this isn't right. 
Why is it that a school 15 minutes away has, has these textbooks and these resources and we don't? Why is it that uh, an 11th grader at Ladue High is scoring this, you know, just asking those questions and looking at those disparities. Um, so for me, it's, it's not necessarily about the color because you got black people going to Ladue High and Clayton High. For me, it's about the disparities and, and the lack of resources and the education, the quality of education that someone at Ladue High is getting versus someone at Sumner. It's a stark difference. Mm -hmm. And so we have to make our parents and our students aware Otherwise, they just grow up thinking, oh, yeah, I'm just getting a regular education. No, honey, you're not. And it's really sad. And we don't, we're not blunt and tell them like that, but we just help them to understand, like, there's some differences. And I think once that awareness grows and grows, you'll start to see parents beat their fist on the desk of these principals of these school boards and start to ask questions. But as long as everybody stays in the dark about it, nothing will change. So you you said a lot. <laughs> and I 100% agree with everything. I guess my question to you next is, what's the one thing that you do wish that parents knew or considered when they're selecting a high school or a middle school for their students? It's not just one thing. I think that there's so, it's like when you're shopping for a college, you know, when, when, when parents and students are looking for a university to go to, you're looking at, what sports are there? What extracurricular activities? How far away is it? What is the tuition? You look into all these things. But when it comes to a high school, it's, oh, your Uncle Jim went there, so go there. Like, no. So parents, I, I, I think one of the things that parents need to look into is um, the maybe the ACT scores or the average ACT score of the students. What are they scoring? Um, attendance rate how how this school ranks and yeah testing scores which I know testing isn't everything but I think that that is a factor and that needs to be looked into uh also the the uh the violence at that school because that can that can affect the student's uh education if you're going to a school where there's constantly fighting every day you that starts to have psychological and tra traumatic effects on the child that could prevent them for, from succeeding in their academics. So I, it's hard to narrow it down to just one thing that the parents should look into, um, but I would definitely say like ACT scores, the average ACT scores that students are scoring at that school I think is important. Awesome, and what gives you hope for the students of St. Louis for the for the education that they're receiving or the kids that you're working with? Honestly, and I'm not just saying this, organizations like your own give me hope because to have an organization, to know that there's an organization out there that is dedicated to basically everything we're talking about, to bringing that awareness, to waking people up, that gives me hope um, because now, little by little, students are gonna start asking questions. Parents are going to start asking questions. Parents are gonna start looking at the data, looking at the statistics, looking at the, the blue, or the, what is it, the green and the red and the yellow indicators, and they're gonna start asking questions. Um, so it, it gives me hope knowing that there's organizations like yours, organizations like my own, that are uh, waking students up to the realities of some of these schools. And it's, in my mind, the goal is not to get all of my students to leave SLPS and go to county schools. No, my goal is to get students, to make students aware so that they can start asking questions and help changing the quality of the schools that they're already going to. For some of them, they're gonna be like, peace out, I'm, I'm out, I'm going to Eureka or whatever. But some of them are gonna be like, no, that's not fair. Why should I have to travel 40 minutes away to get a good education? How about we start making some changes at this school so that me and all my peers can get a quality education without having to take the bus 40 minutes away. That doesn't make sense. It's not fair. It's not fair that I've got 12th graders who are reading at a seventh grade level. That's not fair. You are literally robbing teenagers of an education. That should be a crime. Somebody should be going into these schools, beating their fist on the desk and asking questions. How is it? And I get it. There's so many factors that play into a child's education. You've got at-home trauma. You've got things that they could be dealing with, sleeping in class. There's a lot that needs to be looked into, but come on. 
We no books, lockers don't work. I'm, I've heard so many stories from my students that I actually think they're lying because of some of the things that they tell me. One of my students finished out her math class with a 5% because the math teacher left and went to Africa and they didn't replace him with anyone. I'm not gonna name the school, but it's really sad that these are the realities that are going on in these high schools, that teachers are just leaving and going off to different countries and then they don't find a replacement and then all the students fail and have an F on their transcript. Like things like these, that these are the things that would never happen at county schools. It's not even, it's unheard of because parents would be outraged. But in some of these inner city schools, parents aren't saying anything. And that's what needs to change. These parents need to start going into the principal's office and saying, enough is enough. My baby's gonna get a ed good education. And I'm not about to travel to St. Charles or St. Peter's or Eureka for that to happen. Let's start making some changes. It's, it's ridiculous. Well, you took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I, I agree with you. And when we talk about advocacy and navigate STL schools, our goal is truly to start helping parents understand these issues and advocate on behalf of their children because they, they're the voices that matter and they're the voices that demand the change because their children are being affected and we shouldn't have to wait for organizations to make changes 15 years down the line that's gonna affect kids that aren't here today. And parents should definitely have the ability and the knowledge to speak up and advocate for their children. So when I think of the work that organizations like yours are doing in empowering students and stepping into the gap and in helping them realize that even when it feels like your educational system or your school doesn't care, you matter, that people are looking out for your best interest, that people are encouraging you and pushing you through because at the end of the day, that is really the push that a lot of kids need. It's hard to be in a place where you feel like nobody cares about you, mm -hmm. where you go home and your mom's not there because she has to work to keep the lights on. And so you're by yourself or you go to school and teachers think that just because you're sleeping in class, you don't care about your education. Mm -hmm. To have somewhere to go after school, to have people to lean on who are telling you that you matter, that you are important, are just as important as books because that mental health aspect is really what keeps people going. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for being here. Of course. We are so excited to partner with you to continue this relationship and for all of the exciting things you guys are gonna do. Sure, sure. No, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to speak out about this. This is something I'm very, very passionate about because education made the difference for me. It really did. I had some amazing teachers in both high school and well, really all throughout my uh, school career, education made the difference for me, um, Jesus and education. But education was very big. And I, it's just not fair that that is not even an option for so many in St. Louis. So I'm glad that we're doing this work. Um, it's going to take a long time, but I think people are going to slowly start waking up. And it's, it's, um, it's in the works. It's happening. All right. Thank you guys for listening and have a great afternoon or whatever time you're listening to this. <laughs> <laughs>